Today we have a high number of men and women coming home from Iraq who are facing a tough economy and they can't get a job and they find themselves homeless. We also have a large number of Vietnam era veterans who've been on the streets for a long time with substance abuse and mental health issues who have unique challenges. We need everyone involved policy experts, we need uh, all of our agencies involved, and we need community organizations like Plymouth Housing Group who are really focusing on the unique needs of our veterans today. I found myself in an alleyway, and I had a conscious moment to think. Uh, my life sort of just came before me, and. Uh, that conscience says, you know, John, if you keep doing what you're doing, they're going to send you back in a pine box, and your sister's going to ask what happened to you, and the only answer they're going to give her is that they found you in an alleyway dead. I says, God, I can't do this anymore. Take this from me. You know, I'm giving it up, and I won't turn, I won't go back. You know, because in my belief system, the Bible says we have not because we ask not. Well, consciously. I never asked God to take drugs away from me because I didn't want it. I didn't want it to. And I have such a belief that if I ask, he'll do it. You know, you can't talk about it. You can't talk about how good it could be. You got to want it, you know. And one of the most important actions that you take is working with another alcoholic or an addict to try to help them. It's a very important part of my life. That's how we stay sober, you know, um, by working with other people, you know, other being helpful to someone else, you know, which leads us to be useful in society. When I saw the apartment here, this humble dwelling here, it, uh, you know, I had an appreciation for it. So now I come into Williams' apartment, and now they try to integrate being neighborly, you know, gardening around the building, uh, you know, just community building itself. That's pretty freaking amazing. That's that's pretty freaking amazing, if you ask me. <laughs> that's thanks to Plymouth. Plymouth Housing Group is a great advocacy group that really understands the needs of the local community and can work with people here at the ground level to put together plans and directly meet the needs of our veterans. I think it's important to remember that what we see on the outside never tells the whole story of one's life. I think it's time that we need to start asking ourselves, who is that person living on the street? Whose sister is that? Whose uncle is that? Whose friend is that? Whose mother is that? It's a very scary way to live. Although I haven't experienced it, I've watched what mom goes through and most of the anger, violent rages she would have, they were fear-based because she thought that person was out to kill her or kill us. Or, and so uh, it's, it's a very different way to try to think, but if you do that, then you do understand more of what that person is going through. My mom would be on the street somewhere. Uh, now that my brother's passed away and it's just me, she has no one else, it's so important that I did connect with Plymouth Housing Plymouth, I think that that's the only place that she's ever lived that I feel like she's in a safe spot. They understand the mental illness. They understand that she's paranoid of them, and yet they still show compassion. Marilyn, her case manager, is one of the most compassionate people I've ever met. When Linda first moved into Plymouth on Stewart, she was frightened, and not just because it was a new place to live. Um, she was frightened that we were going to try and commit her to a mental health hospital. Uh, she's had experiences with that and that's not something that she ever wants to go back to. 
It took a while to gain her trust. It took me outreaching her, it took our nurse outreaching her, and reaffirming over and over, we don't want her to go there either. So I will talk to my mom on the phone throughout the day, try to find out what space she's in mentally, <laughs> and then that determines my you know, visitation of how soon I need to get up there. It's not a question of when I'm going, but how urgent do I need to get up there and calm her down. And so I'm lucky enough that her building is only five blocks from my office building. And so I just stop by the grocery store and I'll take her what she needs. And then I still do let her try to cook for me. That's my way of basically testing her on a daily basis to see what she's still able to do. But I could not be doing this without Plymouth. The reason that Plymouth Housing Group provides so many services within the buildings is that we believe in each individual as a whole person who's walking through the door and getting their set of keys. This person has a whole life story. They're living through it right now. Over the last two years, I've seen Linda start to smile more. I'm not kidding when I say she has really one of the best smiles that I've seen. I'm working every day to try and get that smile out even more. She's a wonderful person with struggles, but she's making it and she's getting better, and her son is getting better. It's so easy to walk by people on the street and ignore it because it's too much to think about her process. Plymouth offers a venue for people to reach out and say, I want to help this community, but I don't know where to start. Plymouth Housing is really making sure that these people are getting a second chance. These are someone's family. These are someone's loved ones who have lost their way due to mental illness, addiction, and Plymouth is actively reaching out to this community to help them find a safe place to live and shelter and restart their lives. Plymouth Housing has been the most amazing partner <laughs> that I could have wished for now that um, I'm all mom has left.